Hi, I am Kelsey Staler, and I'm here today with uh, model and trans activist Carmen Carrera. She's going to be on Fusion's Outpost, which premieres March 26th, um, with a really awesome episode where you're in mm -hmm. Sao Paulo. Yes. Um, and so I thought we could talk a little bit about your new episode. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Um, well, can you talk a little bit about sort of the, the series kind of mixes tourism and activism? So can you kind of talk about what you learned and what your experience was? Yeah, well, my experience was really limited. Like, we only had like three days, oh, wow. basically. Yeah, and every day we were visiting um, trans people from different walks of life. So I didn't really get to have too much of the tourism, but the mm -hmm. viewer actually gets to enjoy it. Um, I watched the episode back, and it really gives you sort of like what it would feel like to live in Brazil. You know, you get the city life, then you get, you know, people's private homes, you get the tourist attractions. Um, I actually was able to find, I guess, he was like a vendor or something, selling crystals, like from the actual caves in Brazil. Oh, cool. So that's something that I took home with me. Um, but more than anything, the experience and the interaction with the people in Brazil was like truly magical. Yeah. Well, how involved were you with the reporting side versus the interviewing side? Um, I was pretty hands-on throughout the entire process. Um, mm -hmm. I was able to, I mean, I stood up really late nights and woke up really early in the day <laughs> with all the production people. We really had a, a really good bonding experience. Um, whenever I go and do projects like these, I try to have um, an equal understanding of the sensitivity of the subject matter and also just, um, I guess, just to be able to tell the story uh, and do justice by the people's side, you know. Mm. So it was it was great. It, it was great. I got to really take on the the role of like telling a story, which I've never done before. You know, I've never done anything like this before. Yeah. So it was it was awesome. And how did you get involved with the with Outpost and with Fusion? Um, well, I was contacted through um, my agent to to go on assignment. And I had already been starting to work my activism within the Latin community. I started off in Mexico. I traveled to five or six different cities, um, did like their news channels, and basically brought the issues that was happening within the country like to their mainstream news. I did that also in Colombia. So Brazil was kind of like, I got lucky with Brazil because it wasn't, it wasn't on my radar yet because I'd like to learn Portuguese so I can go and speak. Like I'm just learning Spanish now like to speak it fluently. And um, that's helped me a lot with my activism work. So I got lucky, they reached out to me. I guess they might have heard what I was doing already in the other countries. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, that's how it got started. Yeah, mm -hmm. well the, you know, in addition to, I think there's some scenes that are, you know, obviously a little more um, on the, the happier, lighter side, but there are some sort of mm -hmm. sadder statistics that we deal with um, in this episode, yeah. namely the really extremely high crime rates um, against yes. trans people in Sao Paulo. Um, and in your reporting, did you sort of, find any any reason why this country has such a hard time with that? Well, I, d I don't really understand why. I think maybe it's because they themselves are not aware of all of the different things that are happening. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to pull together the political views, the cisgender views, the um, what L what the LGBT people, you know, would hope for. You know, there's so much hope, especially the trans community. They're so resilient, you know. They're actually used to dealing with a lot of the discrimination and a lot of the hate crimes. Like, it's something that's normal to them. And that breaks my heart, because, you know, it shouldn't be like a normal thing just because you're being who you are to, you know, be murdered or assaulted or discriminated against or just be limited um, in general to having a really good quality of life. So um, for me, it was definitely about pulling all those kind of storylines and then putting it into one, one thing mm -hmm. so that they can watch it and become inspired to take a stand for themselves. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and just a reminder for those of you who just joined us, um, we are talking to Carmen Carrera. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and we will try to add those in as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously I think um, a lot of what the episode deals with is um, sort of the, the jobs that are available to trans people in Brazil mm -hmm. and sort of the, the high rate of people working in the sex trade. Um, yeah. What was your experience with, with sort of receiving that information and, and learning about those statistics? Well, I met with one woman, her name was, her name's Leica, mm -hmm. and she is an older trans woman who basically, you know, has lived the life and walked the walk and she's angry. You know, she's really angry because she feels like trans people don't have any options um, in Brazil. And that was like heartbreaking for me because I, 
you know, with all these amazing things happening for trans people in mainstream as far as visibility goes, you know, it's really inspiring to those individuals in other parts of the world who don't have it um, as kind of as easy as we have it here, where people are actually interested in what we have to say and they're more open to like understanding our struggle. Out there, it's, it's not the same, you know, so I wanted to definitely kind of shield the, the next generation of trans people coming through to, to not have to go through that when they're older, you know? So for me, learning the statistics and then meeting Leica and hearing her story and what she's been through her whole life, and then also learning that the Brazilian government gives uh, programs to transgender people uh, who, you know, in their eyes, will hopefully um, rethink their life trajectory. Mm -hmm. So that tells me it's like, okay, so if I rethink my transition, then the government will help me. Like that doesn't make any sense either. Yeah. So there's just a lot of things that, you know, there, there's, there's no one really fighting out there um, for, for a better life. They're just kind of dealing with what they have. And I'm afraid that in the future, it's gonna cause them more pain, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I felt. I felt instantly like I need to save them. I don't know if that's possible, but it's like I want to so bad because I never realized how privileged I was mm -hmm. even to be able to walk down to Starbucks and you know have a coffee and have a friendly interaction. And that's what a lot of these people in Brazil are, are missing out on. You yeah. know, just a friendly hello, just a feeling of belonging. Um, you know, they're, they're not able to really find any love. You know, the only validation that they get are from each other and that's great to have a support system but what about you know an amazing life after that yeah so, yeah, yeah for sure well and that's something that you really touch on um, in the episode was was sort of the moments in which you really sort of felt your privilege um, mm -hmm. which I think is just you know very interesting considering a lot of uh, the you know efforts that are going on in the US right now to sort of yeah. bring that equality um, what what is that difference like for you you know seeing how much worse it can get in another country. Um, it's scary because I could have been, you know, born in South America. My parents came from South America. I could have been that person, you know. I, I am thankful to God and everyone involved in, you know, helping me achieve my dreams, you know. But mm -hmm. I kind of feel like a responsibility as well. You know, I'm a very humble person. I come from extremely humble beginnings. So for me to see someone who you know, I can relate to on a friendly basis, go through something that I feel they shouldn't have to go through. It just like makes me feel like, wow, you know, like I'm, I know I'm truly blessed, but I want to pass on that blessing too, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know what that word is. Yeah. I don't know what the word is, but that's how, that's how it makes me feel. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, and there's, you know, obviously the very moving conversation during the episode with Sophia. Oh um, yeah, Sophia, yeah, yeah. she's good. Um, and for the viewers who haven't yet seen the episode, um, Sophia is a young trans woman, and she goes by her birth name um, with her family, which is right. Lucas. She lives like on both sides. So you know, in, in her life, she is a boy at home just to please her family. But when she goes out, you know, she she changes in the middle of the street. She's self medicating on you know, however, whatever happens. You know, she's she's kind of blindly. Um, putting herself at risk, mm -hmm. you know, for, for a lot. And my, I, I wanted to pass on a little bit of knowledge for her as well. Like, you know, it's, it's your parents' job to love you. Like, I really believe in that. And sometimes you have to like hold your parents accountable. Like, I know it's, maybe it's like disrespectful to some, but mm -hmm. you know, there at times, especially when you're struggling, um, sometimes you kind of forget, you know, and, and you have to come back to that love um, and, and have that bond with your with your family or at least try like not everyone It's not gonna be easy for everyone But if you if you try and, and you know you bring up how high the statistics are for trans people in Brazil I'm pretty sure that you know your parents gonna like Want to be there for you. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, cuz sometimes that's that's not what they think You know, they're so used to being on their own They're so used to having to fight on their own that they don't take a second to say hey I deserve to be loved and you know who else is love you know is better than my mom or my dad or my sister or my aunt or my grandmother or what whoever mm -hmm. you know because that for me is like a forever thing they're always going to be your family so it's it's worth the investment to work on the love of your family you know especially when you can get killed just for being who you are yeah 
Well, and it, it seems like it's, you know, it's obviously very scary statistics working there. Was it difficult to find a young woman who was willing to go on camera and, and talk about um, her life in that way? No, mm -mm, not really. I feel like, you know, most people in Brazil, they, they want better. You know, they do. Some of them don't know that they can have better, which is where the problem lies. Mm -hmm. But there are those individuals out there that just don't know how to help or just don't know. They know they deserve better, they want better, but they don't know how to. Mm -hmm. So as far as casting goes, like we were really lucky to find people who are willing to share their story, especially go on camera, you know, to know that it's going to be seen by many, many, many people. Um, so we got lucky in that department. We had tons of people that wanted to meet me and wanted to be on camera and have a great time. So, yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I really like the moment too um, when you guys are with the theater troupe, uh -huh. um, and I was since it's such, such a brief moment, I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about that experience yeah. and, and and meeting her friends and sort of how they support her. Yeah, well, you know, it was awesome to see that Sophia, you know, can express herself mm -hmm. um, with theater. You know, she brought me into her group and they performed like a ceremonial sort of dance for me and like I felt like I was being blessed by like the gods like something <laughs> cool because I mean who gets to go to Brazil and get you know get get like a private dance in the middle of like you know God knows where that we were it was just it was just amazing and you know I felt that they really cared for her individuality mm -hmm. which is another really rare thing to find for anyone you know in any group or any setting to have people that appreciate you for you and want to see you blossom and grow is truly amazing. So um, to be accepted and to be welcomed, to have like a little dance party, it was dope. Like I, I got I got really lucky on this trip. I was exhausted, but I got so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like in three days, you had a lot of experience packed in there. A ton, a ton. I was so exhausted that whole time, but I, you know, I stuck to a really good diet and <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried my best to like work out the best that I can. Um, but it was a lot to take in in three days and I'm happy with the project and how it all turned out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, aside from meeting Sophia, was there another moment um, in that experience that really felt like, you know, I'm making a difference. This is really important that I'm here. Um, um, yeah, I would say like watching it back and being able to promote it on my social, like mm -hmm. reading all the messages from people in Brazil mm -hmm. um, who do not participate in the gay pride celebration who you know are living closeted lives you know now they can see um that there's more potential than just you know what's available to them because i put it in perspective mm -hmm. and that for me was like the most rewarding thing to take away from it because that was my goal is to not just go out there and have a blast like it's actually to report on the issues what can be done what are the options and what happens next mm -hmm. so that was like it was like mission accomplished for me mm -hmm. you know and i'm happy because when you go into these projects and you know you have a dream or a vision you know i don't work on the creative side i'm on the talent side so it's different when it goes into editing and when the story is being told and i'm really happy with the entire production team um pharrell williams was actually one of the executive producers so I'm happy that he was on board with this. And um, and yeah, I'm really thankful. Mm -hmm. yeah, it turned out really, really amazing. Yeah, it's great. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait for everyone else to be able to yeah, see it this weekend. Check it out, seriously. <laughs> um, you know, obviously, um, we've, we've touched on a few of the the more upsetting things that, that we learned. Um, I think- Sorry to break your vibe. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's important okay. to talk about these yeah. things. Um, and you talk about, you know, next steps. So, so yes. what what are the next steps? What are the, what are the things that you want to see change? in this community? Okay, um, well first we have to be able to take a stand for ourselves. You know, we have to be able to be informed, we have to be able to be educated, um, and then we have to think creatively about what's gonna be the best uh, best couple, next couple of steps. You know, I've already decided here in the United States that focusing on K through 12 school is like super important on education. So I'm actually teaming up with a group in Boston and it's called Hue. And what we're doing is we're gonna develop a curriculum for the teachers to teach the students about LGBTQ history. So that will start the conversation within school. It'll hopefully break the stigma and it'll also um, educate those individuals within our community that are in school right now, like just feel some empowered, you know, just to know that we have history and we've been fighting for this for a really long time and they are the future. So I really think that the focus on education is most important. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of, you know, obviously talk. I think some people want to be allies. People want to have these conversations. Um, right. And a lot of times the conversation sort of stems towards, you know, I guess 
policing behavior of trans people. Um, how okay. do you feel about when people, tr you know, try to say, well, you should behave this way and, yeah. and things would be fine? Well, see, people do this to me all the time. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you know, I understand, I'm always, I'm always so like on the middle of, with understanding. It's like, you know, we can't take things too personal if, if someone's trying to police our behavior or our language it's it's we should take it as they're trying to understand us mm -hmm. and this is the only way that they will mm -hmm. so instead of you know being like overtly like demanding or you know dismissive even we should try to just take a step back and to understand that communication is really important and most of us have been through a very very like damaging past mm -hmm. um, it's not the whole trans community but it's many of us and you know, I've seen it myself, even going through my steps in my transition and where I came from and the people who mentored me, um, I learned that sometimes, you know, yes, we do have to take a step back and, and understand the language, but also we should um, also be respected by others as well for who we are and how far we've come. Because not many people understand, you know, a lot of people come from a place of their own privilege to where, you know, they live a life that you know they're comfortable in the body they're comfortable with um this the gender assigned at their birth they're happy living that life and and that's all they know so when they hear about someone else's struggle you know and, and it doesn't necessarily make sense to them they tend to be dismissive and and that's where i feel that's what i feel like kind of disrespectful mm -hmm. um but i think it's it's we have to work together you know we all exist here at the very same moment in time and it's like why pick out each other's differences you know let's just get along the best we can because we're just living to die. I mean, realistically, I don't want to like break the mood, but it's true, you know, like we, we have a lot of people who are suffering on this planet. And if we can just help out just a little bit, I think it's worth it. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, sort of on that same note of, of working together and being allies, yes. what, what, when someone says, I want to be an ally yeah. in the trans community, what do you want them in an ideal world to be doing, especially right now in 2017? Oh, sure. I think that um, understanding us is very important. If you want to be an ally, you should definitely understand where, you know, what we've been through and, you know, lend us, you know, some of your, your lessons as well in life. You know, a lot of the times, uh, many trans people live, you know, in the shadows and they don't get to have, you know, just the smallest bit of enjoyment in their day because they're so fearful of, you know, either being attacked or being rejected, you know, um, we, we need a lot of love in our community. And, you know, it starts with, with women accepting trans women um, as women and men, the same thing, accepting trans men as men. And there has to be some type of like teamwork. Um, but it first starts off with understanding, mm -hmm. I think. Understanding and maybe a little bit of guidance too. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course. Turning a little bit to your work personally, yes. What um, do you most hope to accomplish with the influence that you have and the access that you have and the you know pr privilege that you spoke about earlier? What do I plan to accomplish? What do you hope to? Like, what do what's I your hope goal? To, my goal. I want to be like a commercially accepted model, like uh, you know, being trans. Obviously, I'm a trans model, but I just want to be a model. I just want to like sell great clothes and beautiful makeup, and you know, a lot of the companies that have worked with me so far, like I did a campaign for Target. Um, I worked with Ty Hunter on his collaboration with 602 and Foot Locker. So I'm trying my best, but there's still a lot of um, fear with these large companies, you know, that they're afraid to book a model that's trans um, because of whatever reason that they have. So that's, that's really my goal is to be able to do that and then also be able to thrive as an actress playing cisgender roles, you know, and transgender roles. Like I, I see the world as a huge opportunity for me to grow and there's gonna be a lot of no's, but you know, there might be one or two yeses and that's good enough for me. You know, I just wanna be able to work, be successful and continue to live my life after my transition. I don't want to continuously be defined as like the trans person, you know, like I want to be able to be, to be like more than that, you know, I have more to offer. So I want to show the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. And I, I hope the world catches <laughs> up. Yeah, they, um, I think they are. I mean, I have a pretty good following and I have a lot of supporters that write to me every day and tell me like to never give up because they believe in me. So that's huge. It's just all about the right opportunity and, and something big is coming. It's already in the works. I'm working on something else. I can't talk about it, but you know, just stay tuned. Stay yeah, tuned. We will.